Hi there, welcome to ProducerPack.com tutorials. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at Logic Pro's Channel EQ, discussing all of its features and functionality. So if you're a new user with Logic Pro, new to the Channel EQ, I'm hoping you're going to find this tutorial really useful. However, if you're more of an experienced user, we're going to be looking at some of the more advanced features of the Channel EQ, getting right under the hood with it. So I'm hoping there's going to be some new stuff for you guys there too. So you can go ahead and open up the Channel EQ just by double clicking in this little box here and it opens it up or you can go to the insert drop down menu EQ and channel EQ and one of the first things to look at here really is the eight frequency bands that we have the first of which is is a high pass filter um, and you can turn these bands off basically just by clicking them on and off if they're blue they're on if they're greyed out they're off so it's going to roll all the low frequencies off the sound here and then next up we have a low shelf so It's similar to the kind of high pass filter operates in a slightly different way and sort of you can see by the filter shape that we've got there. The next four are parametric bell filters. So these are more for like your precision EQ, you know, just honing in on the exact sound and boosting kind of much thinner frequency ranges. And yeah, these four are all operate in the same way. The next step we have the high shelf. Just boosting and dipping all, all the highs uh, and then finally we have the low pass filter so it's going to roll off all the top frequencies as you could see when i was playing around with these these um these filters here how i was kind of like changing the eq of the sound there's two ways in which we can change it one is the in the graphical display area just by clicking and dragging we can start affecting the EQ or if we um, go into this this section here below this is giving us this sort of exact readout of what's going on so first up we have the frequency which we're affecting so say on this one for example at 200 Hertz and then this is the gain how much we're boosting or dipping so you know at 200 Hertz we're boosting by 6 dB and then the final readout is the Q or the resonance and this is like the width of the frequency band so if I click and drag up it's going to get much thinner. If I click and drag down, it gets much wider, affecting a much larger frequency range. Um, and the high pass and low pass filters operate in a slightly different way with this here because they have the, rather than it being a gain, this middle sort of readout here, that's a filter slope. So you can go right up to 48 dB, which is a really brutal filter slope. We're just really kind of tightly just cutting everything off there below that frequency. Or something like a 6 dB slope, which is a little bit more subtle. Depending on this kind of source material and how you want to use it and stuff. Um, and next thing to look at here is the, um, the master gain, which is a quite a useful feature. Say if you had, for example, the compressor inserted after your EQ and you had this EQ and you're really happy with it, but you just wanted to turn it down by a couple of dB, but you don't want to mess with this level or anything because you just want to be sending a, a, a lower signal into the compressor. So you could just dip the whole thing like that or boost the whole thing, depending on kind of how you're trying to use it really. But it's, uh, it's quite a useful feature. Um, next up, we've got the analyzer. So it's like a frequency analyzer and this is going to kind of like just it's just showing us the frequency of the sound basically um, and this is going to be reflecting any changes that we make in the EQ so As you can see it's reflecting any changes when I roll the bottom and then put it back on again um, and underneath that you have the post EQ so this is the an analysis of what's going on, what's coming out of the EQ basically once we've applied the EQ to the sound. That's what's going on. If we have it on pre-EQ, it's just showing us the sound, the frequency of what's coming into that EQ. You know what I mean? It's almost like the, the unaffected signal basically. So it's not going to be affected by any changes we make here until we have it on post-EQ, then the analyzer is going to reflect that. So underneath that you have the resolution. At the moment it's set on low, but we can go right up to high. 
and we just get more pe peaks basically more points on this um on this analyzer readout here if we have it on high rather as opposed to low but the high does use up more cpu so if you've got like 30 channel eqs or something in your project um something to bear in mind and you're running out of cpu you want to save a bit of cpu you can turn that analyzer off it's going to save you a bit of cpu there or just close the channel eq it's going to free up that cpu <clears throat> So the next thing we can look at is these columns here that we have either side of the graphical display area. And the one on the left is like a zoom, so we can zoom in in our frequency curves. Just just by clicking and dragging that column and dragging upwards, we can zoom right in there, you know, which is quite useful to just get a bit more precise with what we're doing. And on the right here, this right column is sort of relative to this analyzer. If we turn the analyzer off, it just becomes this zoom function also, but if we turn that analyzer back on, it's like a dynamic range display for the analyzer. So it's always giving us a sort of 60 dB readout, basically, as we drag up and down. <clears throat> so that's quite a useful thing. Um, the next thing to look at here is this little triangle here. This You might see this on a couple of Logic Pro's plugins. It's like um, the drop-down menu for a few extra features. That you have within some of these i know that's uh, on there for like the logic pro compressor as well so you can just click that it drops down a few extra features first up is analyzer mode so at the moment it's on peak so it's just shown us all the peak frequencies what this sounds hitting the very top sounds what it's hitting so we can turn this on to root oh rms which is root means square which is more of like a, a kind of average decay basically so underneath this analyzer decay if I drag this over to the right, the analyzer is going to get a lot more animated. Just moving with the sound a bit more accurately. If we move it right over to the left, a bit slower, just kind of holding on the frequencies a little bit more. So I tend to have it right up here, depending on what I'm doing, but usually it's kind of right up there. So I'm just getting a really accurate sort of like analysis of what's going on. Underneath that, we have gain cue couple strength. And this is relative to this little button here. This is gain cue coupling, which is activated by default. And what this means is basically your um, <clears throat> your the, the the cue of your the bands what you're affecting is going to automatically be preserved when you have this activated. So if you watch here, if I pull the this band up here, let's reset some of these values. See how it's quite thin, see the shape of the band. If I reset that and turn this off and then do the same thing, the band's much wider, basically. So this kind of preserves the, the cue of your bandwidths. And by how much it gets preserved is determined by which setting you have down here. So you have six different settings and the bottom three are asymmetrical. And what they basically mean, if you notice here when I boost, Asymmetrical means it's going to boost by a, with a wider cue than when we cut. When we cut, the cue gets much thinner, as you can see there, much wider than when we boost, and then much thinner when we cut. And as we move down here, as we go to light, it's basically going to be a wider, it's a wider cue when we boost. So it's closer to just us not even having the gain cue coupling activated at all. However, if we have it in one of the light, medium, or strong settings, this is a symmetrical setting. So this is going to boost by the same amount as we cut, you know, so you can just play with these. It's quite a useful thing if you're, so you know exactly what you're doing there when you're boosting and cutting. I mean, I tend to have it on the strong setting, symmetrical strong setting, so it's automatically, it's quite thin. And then if I want to edit the cue a bit more there, I can just, just edit it in. Um, and one final thing I was going to mention, like a little tip for... If you want to set, you can do this with any of your Logic Pro plugins. If you want to change the default state of the plugin and say we go, right, okay, every time I want to load up the Logic Pro channel EQ, I want the analyzer turned on, I want it on post EQ, I want the analyzer decay really up here, I want the GameQ couple of strength on strong. We go ahead and go from default. We can go save setting as, save it as default, hit save, replace that. And so if we close down this channel EQ, now, every time we load up a channel EQ, it's going to load it up with those settings for us. You know, which might save you a bit of time having to sort of set up the analyzer, set up the analyzer decay and stuff like that each time you open up the channel EQ. 
So I think that's pretty much all the features covered there. If you've got any questions about this tutorial, then give us a shout. Um, and if you've got any suggestions for tutorials moving forwards that you'd like to see, then let us know also. Okay, hope to see you guys soon. Thanks for listening. Cheers. Bye.